I don't have any desire to live in uh, in the city because I feel the people uh, that live in rural areas uh, have the advantage over people in the cities. They're close to their nature, they're close to their God, and uh, I think they have a better relationship with one another. Spring in Spring Hill, Tennessee. Over at Bill Dodson's farm, there are already three new calves, plus a tiny foal drying its legs for the first time. The hackberry trees down at Rutherford Creek, which for the past few months have pretty much matched the cold gray mood of winter, are getting dressed in a brand new coat of green. It's already starting to get a little warmer, but it's still cold enough so that Mildred Reese, the school bus driver, still likes to start the engine a little early, so the bus will be nice and warm by the time the kids get on. It's spring once more in Spring Hill, the time of year when life begins all over again. But at first glance, despite how nice and pretty everything's beginning to look, this spring doesn't seem to be all that much different than any other. Odessa Barnhill's prize-winning azaleas are in full bloom again. Bruce King's touching up the paint on the Grace Episcopal Church. Lucy Lockridge is taking advantage of the sunshine to air out the family quilts. Pretty much the same as any other spring. there is a difference. It was on TV in the afternoon on the 6 o'clock news. Uh, Tom Brokaw was the one that announced it. And he made the statement that it was in a little town between Holt's Corner, where my husband was raised, and Fly Station. <laughs> what is different this spring in Spring Hill made news around the nation because the events in this tiny town would sooner or later touch the lives of millions of Americans everywhere. And not inconceivably, a good part of the people in a good part of the rest of the world. Because in Spring Hill, Tennessee, they're making a brand new car. But it's not just a brand new car. It's a brand new car being made in a brand new way. Nothing's ever happened here before and of any significance and uh, people kept thinking, well, is it real? Uh, can it be real? And I kept thinking, no, it, it, there's something, it's, gonna, it's not gonna really happen. And of course, some people were saying, we hope it doesn't happen because they like the community the way it is. And a lot of people moved here from other places and they didn't want it to change. So they were hoping it wasn't true. And then the others were hoping it was because of the potential job market, the, the progress that would be made. And of course, it's exciting to have something of this nature come to your town. Down Highway 31 West, about a mile and a half from the center of town, and virtually hidden behind the land where the old Haynes Mansion still stands, one of the largest and most incredible industrial projects in American history is underway. enough concrete to build five miles of freeway, enough steel to make a half dozen Eiffel Towers, enough siding to cover the Empire State Building, over four million square feet all told, well over five times the square footage of all the buildings and houses in Spring Hill, all put together. Right now there, there are probably uh... 3,500 construction workers involved in the project. When the factories are running, there'll be up to 3,000 people involved in building the product. When we're at uh, full capacity, there could be up to 5,000 people involved in the product. 
That probably totals uh, 30 million man hours. All this just to make a new car. 30 million man hours. That better be a pretty good car.